Welcome Java Challenger. Today I'm going to show you how to make your code more robust, cleaner, and maintainable. I'm Rafael Damnero, a Java champion, and today I'm going to show you how to use the single responsibility principle from Solid effectively. Okay, so let's first explore the fundamentals of the single responsibility principle, and afterwards we're going to see the code example. So why is SRP important? Because by applying this concept, you're going to have clarity and cohesion in your code, which means that your code will be very good at doing one thing. And it's also easier to add new features. So because if your code is doing one thing very well, you're going to be able to fix that one thing and not a lot of features in just one method. And the other great thing about that is that every code, every software, they need maintenance. Writing the code for the first time is easy, but then when you have to maintain, it's a lot more difficult because we take approximately 10 times more to read code than to write code. So that's why it's important to use the SRP principle, because there will be bugs, there will be new features to add in our software, and then by applying those principles, it's going to be easier also to fix bugs. So you can solve one bug in one specific method, and you're going to have a specific test to test your one feature. So that makes your code and your software more maintainable. Okay, so now let's see some analogies to help you understand what is a single responsibility principle. So a hammer will drive in a nail into materials. And it's good for that, not for random things, right? A screwdriver is good to insert or tighten screws into materials. And a tape measure is good to measure the length between two points. Okay, so now let's explore the concept of single responsibility principle in the context of monolith and microservices architecture. So let's imagine an e-commerce service with the following responsibilities. It manages users, products, orders, payments, all within a single application. And we don't even have modules in this application. Therefore, it doesn't use the single responsibility principle at all. And technologies used are the standards of the market, Java with Spring Boot and MySQL. Okay, so now let's see the microservice architecture. So now imagine we have the user service which manages using information. And here, we can use whatever technology we want because we are using microservices. So in this case, we are using Python. In the other microservice, we have the product service, which manages product inventory. The technologies are Java with Spring Boot and MongoDB. And notice here that we already have a modular system and we have also the use of the microservices architecture. And then we have the other service, which handles order creation. And in this microservice, we are using C Sharp and SQL Server. And then finally, we have the payment service, which processes payment information. Technologies used are Node.js and Stripe for payment processing. So notice here that each service are responsible for only one thing. Therefore, we are using the single responsibility principle. Also remember that the modularity concept is very connected to the single responsibility principle. So if you create a monolith project and it has the modules well separated, then we are using the single responsibility principle. So keep that in mind that it's not only because we are using monolith that we are not using the single responsibility principle. Because if we have our code 
very well divided into modules. It, it means that we are using the single responsibility principle. And with microservices, we use the single responsibility principle more naturally because we would, most cases, we would divide the services in specific responsibilities. So that would make uh, the use of the single responsibility principle more natural in microservices. Okay, so now let's see the single responsibility principle in code. Notice here that we have the order service and the order service is not using the single responsibility principle, which means that it's doing too much within a single class. It's calculating the total of the order, it's saving the order, the database logic is here. The code's not here, but imagine the code is here and we don't have any external classes being responsible to save the information in the database, for example. So this is an example of a badly designed code. And this makes the code so much harder to maintain because if we have a unit test here, for example, you would have to test everything, right? And those are the order and item classes, nothing special in those classes. Now let's see uh, an example using a single responsibility principle. And notice here that we have something that's much better. We are dividing the responsibilities of the order service into those classes. So notice here that in the order calculator, we have the logic to calculate the total of the order, which is great already because that enables us to unit test this so much more easy, right? And here we have the order repository, which means that we can also test this with unit tests much more easily. So we don't need actually the logic here. So I'm just showing you the concept of the single responsibility principle. But the point here is just to show you that this is much better than what we have here. Because here we are doing everything in this class by not using the single responsibility principle. But when we use the single responsibility principle, then we orchestrate, we are able to orchestrate the logic within different classes. So we're going to be able to unit test order calculator, order repository. And the other important detail is that we are receiving those classes in the constructor, which means that when we create unit tests, it's much easier as well because we can just pass those classes through constructor and that also helps to decoupling our code. So decoupling is just a way to separate concerns, right? So in this case here, our code would be too coupled because we would be doing database logic within this safe order. We wouldn't have an external class such as the order repository in this order service. So this code is much better to maintain and it's much cleaner because then if we have to change anything within the order repository, we're going to have to change only this class, not the whole logic of order service, for example. So every time you're developing code, think about how you can break it down in a way that makes sense uh, in the system so that your code is easier to maintain. So the single responsibility principle is extremely powerful. Okay, so now let's explore the concept of the single responsibility principle with Spring, since it's the most used framework in the world for Java. Let's first analyze how would be the class without the use of the single responsibility principle. You can notice that this code here is a mess. We are doing so much within this method, right? Imagine if this method gets more complicated, 
if we have a new feature that's more complicated, this code would get really bad. And unfortunately, I see many senior developers making this mistake. They put a lot of code in the same method and they have no idea this is wrong. And this makes the code so much harder to maintain, right? So imagine creating unit tests to that. You would see a horrible test to maintain. It's basically a code that you write once and you pray to never touch in this code again, which is not what we are supposed to do as software engineers. As software engineers, we should create code that's easy to maintain. We should create code that other developers look at the code and they easily understand what's going on. So you have to be careful with that. Every time we see a code like that, we should make an effort to refactor it and to use the single responsibility principle, right? And this is just a very simple example, but I've seen much worse in the market. Anyway, so yeah, notice that there is a lot happening here. This method is not cohesive at all. It doesn't use the single responsibility principle. And if you're curious about those repository classes, they're just spring data classes. And they don't do much, they are just an example, and those are just normal entities, nothing special here. Okay, so now let's analyze a code similar from before, but now using the single responsibility principle. Notice that this method is not ultra responsible anymore. It does just few things, and it also delegates the place order logic to this order service. So this code is much better from what we had before. So let's quickly compare here what we had before. So if you notice the book controller, there is a lot more lines here, right? So this is really complicated. And imagine if we had to add new features here or to test this method, it would be really, really difficult. So now that you can clearly see the benefit of using the single responsibility principle, let's explore the place order method. So and an important detail here is that we are passing those classes via constructor because that will make unit tests easier. Right, because then we can just pass the dependencies here and there we go, it's much easier. And look at this method, it's much cleaner, right? Because instead of doing database operations in this method, we are delegating those database operations to those repositories. Here we are doing some basic validation and there we go, we have all the logic here and please notice that this code is not production ready. This is just an example to show you how the single responsibility principle works, right? And a good way to know if you are using the single responsibility principle or not is if your unit test is easy to implement, right? Because if your unit test is easy to implement, it means that your code is cohesive, which also means that you are using the single responsibility principle well. So, and if your code is difficult to test, there is very likely something wrong there. Maybe you didn't break it down uh, into the right business domains. Maybe you didn't create a service specific to that business domain. So always when you're writing code, Think in a way where you can break it down, in a way that it makes sense. So if you have a domain related to the product, create a product service. If you have a domain related to the order, create uh, an order service. If you have a logic related to the user, create something specific for the user. Always think in a ways 
where you can break down your code and your classes into different domains. And I also think in a way to modularize your project. So if you're working in a monolith, break it down into different business domains. And if you're working in a microservice environment, make sure that those microservices are cohesive and they are not doing too many things there. Another good way to know if you are using the single responsibility principle is if your code has more than 20 lines of code. That's a strong indication that you are not using, uh, that your code is not cohesive enough and your code is, is ultra responsible. So we have to always be careful to not make our code difficult to test and we have to always analyze our code to make sure we are using the single responsibility principle well because that will help you a lot to maintain your code that will help you to not work over time right and to lose time that you could be spending with your family that will help you to work in a code that you feel happy that you appreciate right and if the culture of the company you are working for are not very uh, acceptable of those concepts influence them talk to them and convince them that it's good to use the single responsibility principle because then everyone will do their jobs more easily, they will have more time for uh, their families and they're going to also improve technically, which means that they're going to get jobs more easily. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the single responsibility principle. And I also would like to invite you to join my live webinar because I'm going to help you to become a highly paid Java developer and also going to help you to choose the job you want. So it's totally free. We just need to click in the link below and get registered. And I'm looking forward to see you there, okay? So see you the next time.